today from Bombay Pullman, Washington. It's the 89th renewal of the Apple Cup. Washington and Washington State next. Washington. It's Pac-10 Conference football with a terrific league matchup with the 89th annual Apple Cup as the Washington State Cougars play host to the Washington Huskies. And hi everybody, I'm Steve Fiziak. This is David Nori. We have a great college football matchup. It is a great rivalry. It's the old East versus West. It's the Cats versus the Dogs. It's the big city against the country. And check this statement out. It comes from Dan Lynch, class of 84 with the Cougars. He said there are four stages in your life. You're born, you play the Huskies, you get married, you die. These guys take their football seriously. Well, they really take their football seriously. They take the rivalry seriously a lot riding on this game for the Washington Huskies. They have a shot to play on New Year's Day in the Cotton Bowl if they can come up with a win. The only problem, Pullman, Washington has been very tough on the Huskies. The Huskies have only won here once since 1986. Well, the Cougars know they have to stop the great Corey Dillon who had a record-setting performance last week. Corey Dillon is a big, talented tailback. Last week, 222 yards in the first quarter alone. He leads the country in scoring, and in the first quarter, he had a 78-yard touchdown jaunt, just one of four touchdowns that he scored in the football game. And Washington State really feels that they have to run the ball as well to be successful. That means Michael Black, they'd like to see him go over 100 yards, but you really feel that Ryan Leaf, their quarterback, has to come up with big plays. Well, Ryan Leaf has to win this game with his throwing arm. He has to go with some short drops, be effective in the passing game. Last year, in his first start, the Apple Cup game, 22 for 33, one touchdown. He scored two touchdowns on the ground. Ryan Leaf is truly one of the great young talents at quarterback in the country. Well, the elements today, rather cold, and that's one reason we've got Larry Burnett on the field, who battled the elements in Eugene last week. He'll go again today here in Pullman. Larry? Well, the good news is all the snow is off the field. It's on the sidelines. Yesterday, this field was frozen. They said you would have needed golf shoes to play on it. Today, it's okay. They're not wearing golf shoes, they're not going to wear the regular turf shoes either. They're going to wear the destroyers, the ones with the big cleats to give them traction. If they want to stay warm, they've got the regular gloves for warm. For the ball handlers, these will give them a better grip on the football. And for the linemen, these are padded. Knuckles on the turf, this will help. As far as the jerseys, don't even think about wearing the mesh one. That's for warm weather. Get it out of here. They're wearing the, the cold weather ones with the pockets. And in those pockets, little heaters to keep them warm. I'm hanging on to these guys. You're on your own. Hey, what do you say you take them over to those fellows? We got some wild and crazies. They come out for Washington and Washington State. Now to get you caught up with the latest in the world of college football, we send you back to the Fox Television Center and Randy Sparagi. And here come the Huskies. It is absolutely perfect Apple Cup weather in Pullman, Washington. Cold with snow on the ground and more coming. 34 degrees, winds from the east. There is a chance for more snow late tonight. Well, today will be the 89th time these two schools have met. The Huskies have won 56, the Cougars 26, and they have tied six times. More importantly, the home team has won the last five games. This series began right at the turn of the century. And these two coaches have a lot in common. Washington's Jim Lambright went to Everett High School, class of 1961, and one of the guys who watched to play at Everett and later at UW is Cougar coach Mike Price, Everett High School, class of 1964. Price said he and his buddy Dennis Erickson would drive an hour to cheer on Lambright and the Huskies, and Price told us yesterday, when I became a Cougar, that's the last time I ever cheered for Jim. <laughs> Well, here we go. Washington State has won the toss. They will receive the football on the kick from John Wales. D. Morincola, Kevin McKenzie back deep. Morin 
Piccola. He's bringing it out. And Dees past the 20 yard line. All the way to the 34. Well, here's the big fellow from Great Falls, Montana. He is huge quarterback, 6'6, 244 pounds, a redshirt sophomore. And he has very fine numbers, 2,560 yards, 20 touchdowns. Those rival sophomore years like Tim Rosenbar, Drew Bledsoe, Jack Thompson, the great quarterbacks that Washington State has had in their past. Washington State wants to run the ball well. Let's see if they go to Michael Black early. They will. And he handles the left side, no gain. He may have been pushed back. The starting lineups are presented by Southwest Airlines. Michael Black is their leading rusher with 884 yards. Tim's a very good wide receiver. Will also play that slot back. The offensive line, Scott Sanderson, a future pro, goes 6'6", 296 pounds. He's probably the best lineman they've had since Mike Etley. Utley, who went to the Detroit Lions. Second and 11. Washington showing the blitz. Well, they've got nine on that line. And Leaf will run it again. And Black cannot get outside. He'll gain about four, but it'll be third down and long. Tony Parrish ran him out of bounds. Defensively for Washington, David Ritchie is the senior tackle, and a good one from Kelso, Washington. The linebackers probably the best in the Pac-10 as a group. Jason Chorak leads the conference in sacks with 13 and a half. And Tony Parrish may be the best safety in the Pac-10 conference. He has really done a nice job since replacing Lawyer Malloy, who's now with the New England Patriots. Third and six. No backs. Everybody split out. Step drop. He misses his tight end, David Knuff, who really should have caught the football, and Jerry Jensen with good coverage. All day long, Washington State, the theory behind their offensive set, they go with three wide receivers, sometimes four wide receivers. They want to spread you out as a defense and go after you in the secondary. So now coming on to punt for Washington State is Jeff Banks. He averages 43 yards per boot. You see that long of 55. They have a better kicking program than does Washington. And smothered at the 22, really taking a chance at accepting the football was Washington. And Dave Janowski is down immediately. Here's Brock Hewitt, a 6'5", redshirt freshman from Puyallup, Washington. He's thrown for 1,534 yards. His responsibility, get the football into the hands of Corey Dillon. And when the play-action pass works because Dillon is running so well, that is when Hewitt has been so effective. tight end. They give it to Dillon. He slams the middle. He went over the left guard, Bob Sapp, and gains about five yards. The Husky lineup presented by Southwest Airlines. Corey Dillon, the great running back, but watch Jerome Payton. He's a big play wide receiver already with six touchdowns this year. Great offensive line. Benji Olsen, Football News, first team All-American. He goes 6'4", 310 pounds, and he is only a sophomore from Port Orchard, Washington. There is Benji. We think he is one of the best linemen they have ever had, and they've had great ones in Seattle. They'll run Dylan Wright, and he's to the outside. First down, Corey. Derek Henderson pushes him out of bounds. Defensively for Washington State, Gary Holmes and Leon Bender, two of the best tackles that the Cougars have had. Both are over 6'6 and 300 pounds. The linebackers, James Darling in the middle, leads the Pac-10 with 125 tackles. And the secondary, Dwayne Stewart is a big, physical, strong safety at 6'3, 215 pounds, a junior from Ontario, California. 
past the 37 yard line. There are flags down. You were trying to throw to Janoski, and I believe a Cougar was in the neutral zone. Washington State will be hit with an offside penalty. Three linemen along the Cougar defensive front stepped into the neutral zone. Good job by the young quarterback, Brock Heward, using his cadence. Offside. Defense, five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. David, we were talking with his offensive coordinator, Scott Linehan, yesterday, and he was telling you that he has really matured a lot since we saw him last against UCLA. And the running game with Corey Dillon takes so much pressure off a young quarterback. Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator last night, told us he has been so impressed with Heward's command at the line of scrimmage and his checks getting the Huskies to good downhill running plays in the offense. Well, touchdown passes, five intercepted. that Scott Lenahan told us yesterday, Dylan can come out of the backfield and catch the ball well. And when you have a great offensive line and a tailback like Corey Dillon putting up the numbers he has over the course of the season, it makes your play action passing game that much more effective. He were to bootleg to the left, looking on the fade route down the sideline to his tailback Corey Dillon, just an effortless throw for Heward. He's a very talented passer. Again, Washington going double tight end. It's second down and five. They will run their back of running back, and that is Jason Harris as Dillon went to the sideline, and Jason up close to a first down. He is only a sophomore from Diamond Bar, California. On the spot, he's come over from Seattle. He, oh, he needs it. He's got a nose job. <laughs> Now the game plans for both teams in this Apple Cup rivalry game center around Corey Dillon. Well, Washington very impressive converting on third downs over the course of the year. Washington State defensively is a seven-man front, but to stop this running game of the Huskies, they're going to go with eight-man and nine-man defensive fronts over the course of the afternoon. Harris stays in. Dillon still on the sideline. And the flag is down, and the Cougar may have been across that neutral zone first down regardless darling on the tackle on the tackle number we talked about Heward and his ability to be the field general even as a freshman once again in a critical situation this opening drive he pulls the Cougars offside this is going to be a first down for the Huskies David, in that situation, is it the center, Olin Cruz, who makes the decision when he sees a, a defensive lineman in that neutral zone? The Cougars' Off penalty side. is hurting them all year Defense. long. Five yards from the previous spot. The yardage gives Washington the first down. But getting back to your comment, Steve, it's the quarterback's job to draw the defensive players into the neutral zone with his cadence, and then if the center, Olin Cruz, feels a defender in the neutral zone, he'll snap the ball immediately and take advantage of the five-yard penalty. Well, the Huskies in Cougar territory at the 49. Fred Coleman goes in motion. Dillon back in. Gains nothing. James Darling's there from Kettles Falls, Washington. And it's really a numbers game. Washington State, they're going to commit extra defenders to the line of scrimmage. Eight-man, nine-man defensive fronts. James Darling, the top tackler in the Pac-10. Getting a little help there from number four, Johnny Nansen. But Washington State is just going to try to gang up on that Husky running attack and put the game in the hands of the freshman quarterback. Second and ten. They'll go with one tight end, and he's a good one. Cameron Cleland on the right. Dillon. Oh, he slams forward. He was met at the 45 yard line but his leg drive was so strong taking him all the way to the 41. Corey Dillon came into the ball game with 1400 yards the best season in Washington history and he is such an impressive combination of quickness and moves and just straight ahead power. If you're not set as a linebacker or defensive back Corey Dillon's going to run you over. He has 24 yards now on four carries. Third down, two yards to go. No backs as Dillon goes in motion. Hewitt dumps it off Cleveland. Cleveland gets the 
first down and more inside the 30-yard line. Gary Holmes, the defensive tackle, had to run down the big tight end from behind. So we met with Washington State defensive coordinator Bill Doble last night. I said, Bill, are you worried about the Husky screen game? He said, you know, they haven't been running many screens lately, but I am worried about the tight end screen. That's a big concern for me. And a great job on the last play, slipping the tight end outside, the screen pass, and the Huskies are operating first down. Bill Doble, we understand, is might be wanted by Indiana University after they let go of their coach, Bill Mallory. Double tight, Jason Harris, big hole, Harris banging his way to the 22-yard line. And all of the second and short situations really gives Washington a big edge. The Washington is very good up the middle. The two guards in the center, the best trios inside on the offensive line across the country. And that's why the Huskies love to run the ball inside. They like to send Corey Dillon in between the tackles for the punishing ground game. They come out and say, hey, let's see if you can stop us. by Brock Ewers. It is so tough to put the pressure in the pocket on Brock Ewers. Washington loves to go with the quick three-step game. They pick up the blitz. Washington State was bringing Derrick Henderson on the safety blitz, the fade pass into the end zone, and a great effort by Payton leaving his feet. Not a bad throw either from Brock Ewers. Brock Ewers knows he missed that ball by just inches. So Dillon comes back in on third down and two. And Corey gets the call to carry the first down. Golly, he is tough. We started this year, and when we saw him in his first start against Stanford play so well, we thought, hey, there's not a better running back in the Pac-10 conference. Now we're beginning to think, there might not be a better running back in all of college football. He's been so effective, especially over the last five games. And coming into the season, the University of Washington had a man by the name of Rashawn Sheehy at tailback. He was the most highly publicized tailback coming into the year in the conference. But Dylan has made a lot of people forget about Sheehy in Seattle. running him out of bounds. We're talking about Rashad Sheehan. It was last year where Leon Neal was the running back. He got hurt. Sheehy came in and became an all-pack 10 runner. Now Sheehy goes down with an ankle injury this year and he can't get back in the lineup because of number four. Dylan showed that he was such a force even during the offseason, the spring and the early fall that even if she he was going to stay healthy over the course of the 96 season Dylan was going to get a lot of playing time he's that good as a running back second down and short again impressive drive by Washington on the first possession Dylan will get stopped well shy of the line of scrimmage he'll lose a yard and a half and Dorian Booz with an impressive tackle coming from his left end Started at their own 21, and they've got 12 plays thus far. Now it's third down and two. Washington State pretty impressive up front as well. Booth, Holmes, Bender, Doyle. As a unit, they're a little bit better rushing the passer. Today they're going to be called upon to stay at home and exert some force against the Husky running game. Will they go back to Dillon? the six-yard line. Brandon Moore. Well, James Darling, the middle linebacker, gets most of the publicity at Washington State. He leads the conference in tackles, but the second leading tackler for the Cougars, Brandon Moore, has had a great 96 season. 
penetration into the backfield. The best way to take down Dylan is get him before he gets started. Now from 23 yards out, John Wales was the hero last year as Washington beat Washington State in Seattle. His field goal is on the way and perfect. It's the 89th Apple Cup, and John Wales has given Washington a 3-0 lead on Washington State. Washington has a 3-0 lead on Washington State. It's the 89th meeting of this Apple Cup, and there is Mike Price. He's had a little bit of the flu, was under the weather yesterday, but he said, hey, I will completely forget my illness during the Apple Cup. This is war. Kenzie Morancola back deep. Short kick. And down at the 28-yard line is Sean Timms. All year long, the Huskies utilizing that high pooch kick on kickoffs. Very difficult for teams to handle that kick, especially with some of the upbacks, but Price, a great job this week working with his teams. Got 14 plays on that opening drive, just a bruising drive behind Corey Dillon. Dillon. But Price, a nice job of having his special teams ready for the Huskies' special kickoffs. Leaf needs to come up with some first downs. Play action pass is going deep. And it is almost intercepted. Washington State's defense, though, David, was on the field almost seven minutes, and it's important that the Cougars come up with some first downs to give them a rest. That's one, one of the tough things about going with the three-wide receiver base set on offense. It's tough to control the ball with your running game. You only have one back in the backfield. Well, you tough got a feeling of just how cold it is. This guy's on fire. Second and ten. Jermaine Smith back-to-back -back fine defensive plays. And what a job by the young freshman cornerbacks all year long for Washington. Jermaine Smith number one, Mel Miller on the other side. Teams have tried to go after the corners of Washington throughout the season. The front seven, front eight for the Huskies has been so tough to run against. But these corners have been good against the passing games of opposing teams in the Pac-10. Tough assignment for Ryan Leaf this afternoon. And the Cougars last in the Pac-10 at converting third down. Leaf almost had it picked up. He threw it right by his intended receiver, Sean Tim. So it's three and out again for the Cougars and Leaf. Incomplete on three in a row. Leaf, not a good job early. He's going to low percentage throws, taking a couple cracks down the field. Here, a very poorly thrown ball on the crossing route. He's trying to hit Tim's, his slot back, on a dig route across the middle. Very lucky not to get that ball picked off by the free safety. Washington. 31 yard return. Nice return by the young guy. Look at the locks from behind. He's hey, he's the Yanni of college football. Pac-10 Conference football is brought to you by GTE. It's amazing what we can do together. By Southwest Airlines with low fares on every flight, every seat, every day. And by Power Bar, fuel for optimum performance. Steve Fiziak, David Norrie, Larry Burnett with you, and the Washington State fans have brought their hard hats. Or their big ones, anyway. I would imagine there's a lot of shouts of down in front behind them. Washington, first and ten, 
Heward. He's going deep for the home run. Jerome Payson almost hauled it in. It would have been a sensational catch. Well, Jim Lambright told us if there's one wide receiver we have who's not afraid of the cold weather, it's Jerome Payton from Vancouver, British Columbia. Great action in the pocket on the play action fake, and this was an unusual route by Payton. He, run a po he ran a post corner post. He made a move to the center of the field, then outside, then back to the middle, and Hewer just missed. Payton on that play. I think Payton should have kept his feet. Would have had a better chance to bring that ball down. Easy for you to say up in this warm boot. Here's Corey Dillon. And he'll only gain three yards. Not even three. He'll gain two yards. It'll be third down and eight. The Cougars continuing to go with eight-man and deep nine-man defensive alignment. Three times already in the first quarter, Heward has just missed Jerome Payton on deep routes. And on all three of those routes, Payton has left his feet on diving attempts. I think the first two were warranted, but on that post-corner post pass, the second down play, Payton's got to keep his feet. He had a great shot to bring that down for six. Now single coverage for both D. Morincola and Chad Henshin on the right side. Heward backing up. And Payton hit hard by Dwayne Stewart as the pass goes incomplete. And this is a very important defensive series for Washington State. Brock Heward was trying to set up the wide receiver screen outside to Jerome Payton. Some viewers may ask, hey, why isn't that pass interference? Hey, you can haul off and hit a receiver if he's behind the line of scrimmage before the ball arrives. And secondly, that ball was really uncatchable. Not a very good pass by the young quarterback, Brock Heward. Sean Timms, he is actually tied for the Pac-10 lead with Jerome Payton, both at 12.1. So we will see two of the top return specialists in the conference today. And that ball going towards Timms, but into the end zone. And it'll be first and 10 for the Cougars are at their own 20-yard line. Let's go down to Larry. Well, oh, guys, defensive lineman Dorian Bush, number 90 back here, has a lot on his mind today, not just the game. This little beeper is being carried around by trainer Mark Smaha. It is connected to his wife, Brenda, who is expecting any minutes. She is at home. He is here. They're connected by the beeper. He's got a lot on his mind. Back up to you. No question, and Brenda was supposed to deliver this past Tuesday. And the coaching staff was saying, wouldn't you know it, it'll be game day, fourth quarter, big moment, and we got to lose the boozer. The media asked Boost this week, what if the delivery took place during the game? And he said, no doubt, I'd head straight to the hospital. I'd have to forego the apple cup. <laughs> First and ten, a draw. The tackle is broken by Michael Black but then he's surrounded just past the line of scrimmage by Jason Chorak and also John Fiala. Well, Price said yesterday it was so important to not abandon the running game early. Very tough to run against this eight-man defensive front for Washington. Washington State has the benefit of going with three wide receivers. That takes one of those eight men out of the box, away from the line of scrimmage, close to the football. Washington State, not a lot of success early running the football. Huskies have been stopping everybody from running well. I mean, they have won their last five games after that terrible loss at Notre Dame. Ryan Lee throws. He is caught at the 25-yard line and out of bounds near the 28. Jerry Jensen pushed him out. Look at this in overtime. USC and UCLA. Wow. The Trojans had a big lead early, and the Bruins have come back. USC led 24 to 7 in that game. And Stanford may be going to a bowl. Tyrone Willingham said November has to be theirs, and that Cardinal Ball Club has played so well. And Oregon hammering Oregon State. What an upset here as Ohio State will not go to the Rose Bowl without. With an unbeaten season. The Buckeyes for the second straight year, unbeaten playing Michigan, and they lose. Stuck at the 24-yard line. Great play by Chris Campbell. 
Well, they're running for minus yardage. And it was that Notre Dame game that really turned things around for this Washington football game. The Washington is so good on the outside. Their strong linebacker, Chorak, Jerry Jensen on the other side. But a great year, a quiet year, but a great year inside by both Chris Campbell and David Ritchie. Nice play by Campbell on that third down. And still the Cougars on three possessions have not come up with a first down. Jarsinka at the 30. This kid has absolutely tremendous courage or he has limited smarts because that's <laughs> twice now, David, that he should have fair caught the football and he's fortunate to come up with it. We pause now for this word from your local stations. You're watching Packley to tie this game in the first quarter. Down 3-0. Leaf swings it to Michael Black. Forget it. A huge loss of eight yards in the play. Lester Towns, the inside linebacker, just a redshirt freshman from Pasadena, California. The future of this Husky team, very scary. Lester Towns is a backup linebacker for Washington, and he is really a player of the future. He plays behind John Fiala at that inside linebacker spot. Fiala slowed several weeks during the 96 season with injuries and Towns has done a great job filling in. He's very athletic. I think he's a future All-American in Seattle. This is Washington State's fourth possession. They have one yard total offense. And Leaf throwing. And they get something back here, but there's a fumble in the play by Nyan Taylor. They say he did not hold it long enough. So Leaf is facing a third down and 18, and they're just going backwards. Ryan Taylor has struggled early with his accuracy. This time he's right on the money. Great ball on the slant to Taylor. Taylor has to make that play. This is a poor play by Nyan Taylor. In an Apple Cup game, you have to make that catch. He may miss a little bit of playing time the rest of the way. You just have to come up with those plays at this level. Washington right now not showing a blitz. They might come from the left side where Jerry Jensen is. He's number 40. He drops back in coverage. He's in trouble now. Wings it downfield. Incomplete at the 23-yard line. Well, Leaf wasn't helping himself early. Now he's throwing it where his receivers can catch it, and they're just not coming up with a football. You might have a face mask here that isn't called. It's after the play, after the ball was released by Leaf, and sometimes Leaf doesn't go with the most sound fundamentals in the pocket. A sidearm deliver delivery, he threw that ball down the field late. by Jeff Banks as it goes out of bounds of the 25 yard line 24 yards on the boot Washington has a 3 nothing lead as we are early in this ball game 4 19 remaining in the first quarter the Cougars really let an opportunity slip away they create the turnover near midfield Ryan Leaf had a great shot to put his team in scoring position Taylor with the drop. McWashington might have been able to come up with a play on that third down pass. Now the Huskies have the ball back. You have to take advantage of the mistakes Washington gives you. The Huskies, one of their best turnover ratio teams in the Pac-10 Conference, and Washington State dead last. It is Jerome Payton with the catch. He is out of bounds at the 38-yard line. When you play eight and nine men up on the line of scrimmage, you pay a price in the defensive secondary. The majority of this game, Washington State's going to have to lock up with the Washington receivers man-to-man. -man. That makes things a lot easier for the quarterback and the receivers. On that last first down play, Brock Hewer just pitch and catch with Payton on the out route. Derek Henderson, the free safety, will move over to double the two receivers on the right side. You know, only one time this year has a 
Washington State defense allowed more than 100 yards to an opposing running back. That was Skip Hicks earlier this year for UCLA. But Corey Dillon with 54 yards rushing in the first quarter alone. Well, that's better than what San Jose State did against him last week, where they held him to 222. Huskies by three. Did Washington have a Washington has a 3-0 lead over Washington State as we start the second quarter. And the Huskies with the football at their own 43-yard line facing a second and five. Payton to the right side, Dillon the lone setback, and they're going to go deep, and it's Jerome Payton, and he makes the catch. A flag is down in the area where Jerome made the catch. Jerome Payton, number 24, the intended receiver. Jerome, a transfer from Arcadia University in Nova Scotia. He was also on Canada's national track team, great athlete, but he has the ability to play in Pass cold weather. Defense, 15 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Well, we had to wait to see how the referee sorted out that call. There was a question of whether the receiver had stepped out of bounds and then had come back inbounds to make the catch. That wasn't the case. Pass interference call, 10 yards. Not a spot of the foul call at the college level, so... Once again, Brock Heward working first down with his Husky offensive unit. And they have the football at the Cougars 42-yard line. Dillon stays in. Two wide receivers left. Gerald Harris and Jerome Payton. Flags go down. Dillon goes down, but I believe the Cougar was again for the third time in this game in the neutral zone. Washington State's going up against probably one of the best 10 teams in the country this afternoon. You can't make mistakes consistently in this game, and I'm talking about Washington State, and expect to beat a team the quality of Washington. Defense, five yards from the previous spot, still first down. Dropped passes, offsides calls, and the Cougars cannot get it done that way. They're going to have to button things down, clean up their play both on offense and defense. They've done a great job so far not letting Corey Dillon get off. David, we are having some technical difficulties. We're trying to correct those at this time, so please stay with us. First down, five yards to go. Kissel going out to the pass. He's covered, so Brock decides to run, and down he goes at the 35-yard line. The tackle by Dorian Booz. Well, you know, look at this. We've got a Husky who's probably the husband, a Cougar who's the wife, and they're sitting together. <laughs> it's a battle of cats. Oh, she just got him on the side of the head. <laughs> so did you see that? He didn't pick up the first down. <laughs> Now, this is a bitter rivalry. You have to talk to the people across the state of Washington. The last time these two teams met with the Rose Bowl on the line, 1981. Washington State and Washington in that game. With a shot to go to the Rose Bowl, the Huskies came up with a 23-10 victory and moved on to Pasadena. Well, Washington threatening to score some more. They currently have a 3-0 advantage on Washington State. Well, uh, we're hoping that the snow. <laughs> and, no, uh, actually, be serious with you, we need to put 14 guys on defense and pay off officials. But I don't know if there's any serious way of stopping Corey Dillon. We have to contain him and not let him break any long runs. Big plays is what we've got to make sure we don't let them have. And there is number four going for his 21st touchdown this year in the all-time Washington scoring record. Third and goal. Dillon. He's in. And Corey Dillon has just set the all-time Husky scoring record, breaking the mark 
mark of 125 set by the great All-American Hugh McElhaney back in the 1950s. And Dylan, some 46 years later, has rushed for one touchdown in the season. Rushed for 20 and caught one more. And just a great feel by Dylan to bounce that run outside. Washington Alex State Hullabaugh. blitzing up the middle, stuffing things up the middle, and Dylan just bounces outside and runs over the strong safety, Dwayne Stewart. John Wells for the point after. It is good, and the Huskies have themselves a 10-0 lead. This is a blast play. Washington State blitzing up the middle. Dwayne Stewart, the strong safety, trying to come up and take Corey Dillon on at the goal line. Dwayne Stewart is six foot two, 218 pounds. I mean, he's a big, strong safety. And Corey Dillon says it's going to take more than one tackler to stop me from getting into the end zone. You know, he's carried the football over 20 times already in the first half. I haven't seen Arnold Schwarzenegger's new movie yet, but I think that's what he's after. He's turned man and he does it quietly he hasn't had any big runs yet in the first half this big talented offensive line of the huskies they work on you they wear you down i mean dylan just his own physical nature can wear down a defense Washington State's going to have to answer. The Cougars have not picked up a first down, and we have seven minutes and 51 seconds to go in the second quarter. Yeah, we have seen Washington State with four offensive possessions, and their total time with the football is just over four minutes. That play took twice that much. 8.15 off the clock, and the Cougars' defense has to be panting. I mean, they have been on the field almost the entire first half. And that's what Washington tries to do. They try to jump out to a lead. They have the eight-man defensive front on football. They turn you into a one-dimensional team where you have to throw the ball, abandon your running game, and then they rush the passer. Washington has the Cougars right where they want them right now, up 10 points. Something special from the special teams could really help. It'll be Sean Timms at the 29-yard line. He's through! Pass to 50! Timms out of bounds inside the 40-yard line. Well, David, they've got something special. Well, we talked about Mike Price and his preparation against the short kicks, the short kickoffs that Washington has made popular this year, and a great job by John Wales, the kicker. He uses the sideline as an extra defender. The one thing you don't want to do as a kicker, if you're the last line of defense, is let Sean Timms get inside of you. Wales forces him outside and avoids the touchdown. the Huskies pay. They accepted a fumble inside Washington territory and could not score. They'll go to Michael Black and Black to the 35 and out of bounds near the 32. Let's go down on the field to Larry Burnett. Uh, Corey Dillon with that record-setting touchdown. Got a lot of congratulations here on the Husky bench. This is a guy three years ago was drafted by the San Diego Padres, did not sign, and he was cleaning offices in Seattle when he decided to go to Dixie Junior College. He set records there, was the national running back of the year, and the rest is history. He had 1,899 yards to lead all junior colleges last year at Dixie, Utah. And look what he has done. 20 rushing touchdowns in one season. He is just too shy of the great Heisman Trophy winners, O.J. Simpson and Marcus Allen. Play action. Not much was there, but the catch is made for maybe a yard gain, and it is the first complete pass thrown by Ryan Leaf in this game. Hey, you'd think on second and short play action pass, Ryan Leaf would have some time in the backfield. Not so. Jason Chorak, the sack leader in the conference, number 46 in the middle of your screen, was all over Ryan Leaf. Leaf did well just to get that pass off. He is just a junior. Washington State has not converted a third down. They don't even have a first down in this game. Decision time for Mike Price, down 10-0. 
with six minutes and 47 seconds remaining in the first half. Ryan Leaf has a great future ahead of him playing for Mike Price in the Palouse here in Pullman. But he is going to have to become a more accurate passer. He's looking for McKenzie over the middle on that third down pass. He had him wide open and just not a very good throw by Ryan Leaf. David, he got 53% of his passes, but in his offense, you don't think that's good enough. I don't think 53% is enough. I think his, his completion percentage has to be up closer to 60% if the Cougars are going to be successful with this offense. Fourth and three. Blitz on. He dumps it off. Incomplete. Intended for Mike Black. Jerry Jensen and Jason Chorak all over Ryan Leaf. So the fourth down goes for naught, and still the Cougars without a first down. And Leaf faced pressure on that play. The Cougars were able to get into the pocket and get in Ryan Leaf's face, but Leaf is 6'6". Six, six. He's got to make this play. He's got to take the ball out over Jerry Jensen, number 40, the linebacker, put a handle on the ball, and give Michael Black some running room. A bad throw, an inaccurate throw, and the Huskies take over. And the Cougar defense back on the field again. We've played almost 25 minutes of football here at Martin Stadium, and Washington has had it almost 20 of those minutes. Dillon out past the 35-yard line near the 40. He's closing in on 100 yards rushing. And when things are going the Huskies' way, when things are clicking for the Huskies, they have a 10-point lead, the Cougars can be sure about two things. They're going to see a lot more of Corey Dillon when they're on defense, and they're going to see a heavy pass rush. Ryan Leaf, if he's going to bring the Cougars back, he's going to have to do it against some heat. yard line. Washington State putting a lot of men on the line of scrimmage, going man to man on the outsides. And that means you have to give the wide receiver some cushion when you're a cornerback. Good execution by Brock Heward hitting that out route. He has a very strong arm. He's going to play in the NFL this someday. minute mark of the first half. Huskies leading by 10. Dillon forward near the 40-yard line. That is his 24th carry of the first half alone, a good 6-7 yards. He's got now 86 yards rushing, but you remember last week, David, he had 16 carries in the first quarter alone. They're trying to keep everyone warm in the field, but he came to the sideline because we thought, you know, 222 in the first quarter, this guy can go after all kinds of records, yet their coach, Jim Lambright, said he came to the sideline, hunted out Al Roberts, and said, hey, I'm done. <laughs> well, you figure 303 yards of all-purpose running, you're going to be pretty tired after a quarter, and Corey Dillon was. Well, they've come across again. This would be the fourth time they have been inside that neutral zone. Looked like Leon Bender, the big 6'5", 312-pound junior, jumped across. Scott Linehan talked about Heward and how smart he's been at the line of scrimmage with his audibles. Before the snap, offside, defense, five yards from the previous spot, and the yardage is enough for a first down. Heward's been very heady, and he's been getting the team to the right plays, whether it's in the running game or the passing game. So far in this ball game, he's tried to draw the Cougars offsides when the Huskies have had a, a second and less than five or a third and less than five, and that way he picks up the first down. Smart play by the young freshman. And that is five penalties now against Washington State, the most heavily penalized team in the conference. Heward, he's got one-on-one -on -one coverage. Cleveland's out there, broken up nicely by Dwayne Stewart. I had a chance to watch this guy play some baseball on the Washington State Cougar baseball team, and he's good in that sport as well. He were just a straight five-step drop. He's looking on the corner route to Cleveland, and 
Stewart, a nice job closing on the ball. Ball wasn't well thrown. The ball was thrown behind him a bit. Stewart's a guy who's not a very good practice player, but he shows up on Saturdays. The Cougars coaches have been very impressed with his play. Second and ten. This is Jason Harris. A short gain as Stewart making the tackle. Jason getting a little more work today. He's got three, four carries after coming in with 32. He was primarily a blocking back in high school at Bishop Amat down in Southern California near Diamond Bar. Big play coming up for the Washington State defense. Things are going well for Washington. They control the clock. They lead the Pac-10 in time of possession. The clock is already inside four minutes to go in the first half. Well, Keaho is in the game as the fullback. Dylan remains in as the tailback. They will send Fred Coleman in motion. Payton is to the right side. And they throw a sideline route to him, but the pass way too tall for Jerome Payton. And a good play by number 15, Shad Hinchin, the cornerback for Washington State. He's the Cougars' top cover man. A nice break on that out route. Huskies will have to punt. Hamid Sarshar comes in to do just that. delay and I think there was some activity up on the line of scrimmage it's a question here of whether Leon Bender the defensive tackle for Washington State was the drawn offside offside on a defense five yards from the previous they may spot. go for it now still fourth down the Leon Bender number 91 over the left guard Lester Towns, who plays as a linebacker defensively, he's in on special teams. This will not give the Huskies a first down, but they will go for the field goal. And that means in comes the kicker, John Wales. His long this year has been just 42 yards, and this one will be some from 47. <laughs> has had a tough time over the last couple of years in the kicking department especially with their place kicker John Wales doesn't get a lot of lift on the kick Bender gets a piece of it and Brandon Moore with just a little bit more running room he's liable to take this all the way back a good job by Washington's place kicking outfit to get back and make the play including John Wales who slid by Brandon Moore but still help get him out of bounds. Wales has not had a lot of success, especially on long field goals. One for three from 40 yards and beyond this season. The Huskies have not tried a 50-yarder or beyond. Well, the Cougars have to take advantage of opportunities. Twice now their special teams have bailed them out and given them outstanding field position. And another time they had a fumble recovery inside the 40-yard line, but they have been able to get on the scoreboard. Good game, but fumbles the football. He held on as he juggled it near the 45-yard line and is near first down. Head coach Mike Price told us yesterday, we're going to be patient. We're not going to get away from the running game. We've got to pick up some consistency. We haven't run the ball well the last two to three weeks. Last week against Stanford, we got away from Michael Black. And I think Mike Price has done a good job so far sticking with that run. Black again, he will not get the first down as he noses forward to the 46-yard line, needs to get to the 45, just past it, for the first down. David Ritchie on the tackle. It's so tough when you play three receivers in the tight end. 
to consistently run the football because as a defense you can bring one more defender inside and create some numbers problems for the for your running game. Do they go back to black or will they throw the football? Single coverage left. Play action pass. Leaf in trouble. Incomplete. Galiaga really busted Ryan Leaf as he tried to deliver that football to his tight end David Knuff. Ink Aliaga coming on a blitz. Normally as an inside linebacker, he has pass coverage responsibilities. And he surprises Ryan Leaf. That is a solid tackle, especially in 35 degree weather. Real, real shaky start for Ryan Leaf. Only two for 12 zero yards and here's a guy who loves cold weather he is from Russell High School in Great Falls Montana he said the colder the better the Washington the guy who likes cold weather Washington State not exactly threatening the field vertically with their passing scheme so far in this game the Washington was offside and this gives the Cougars their first first down of the game and we have just 237 remaining in the first half Black breaks a tackle past the 40. So a good six, seven yard gain for Michael Black. You know, the one thing that has impressed me today is sometimes Black will break one tackle, but Washington's defensive recovery, their speed is so good. That was a nice job by Black to break the tackle of the line of scrimmage, but also to change directions back to his right. Washington was bringing a blitz by the rover, Nigel Burton. Black's gone over the 100-yard mark in four games so far this year. Out of West L.A. Junior College, where he set a school record last year, rushing for over 2,400 yards in a single season. The Washington defense, he's not going much of anywhere. Loses two. It'll be third down in about six. Uh, if Washington State's going to get back into this game, they've got to rev up the passing game. Ryan Lee has to shake the cobwebs. He has not been very effective over the course of the three-game losing streak. Mike Price put together a tape for Ryan Leaf earlier this week with all his great plays over the course of the season. And he gave it to Ryan Leaf, and he wanted to show Ryan Leaf all the success that he had had. Get some confidence back for this young quarterback. We're going with three receivers to the left side. Third down, a passing down. Black was well covered. He came back looking for his tight end Knuff. It's incomplete in fourth down. Boy, they are just reading everything. That defense is doing a great job. Randy Hart, who is the assistant head coach and defensive coordinator for Washington, really with a great design, well executed. And you see the patience there by Mike Price helping Ryan Leaf get his jersey back over his shoulder pad. Ryan Leaf has been contained. Even though he's six foot six, he's got great scrambling ability but the Huskies have done a great job keeping him in the pocket and harassing. Banks kick. The Cougars let it go into the end zone. And Chris Jackson was the closest to it, and he was standing at the goal line waiting for it to come to him so he could knock it back, and it shot right past. The Huskies have a minute and one second left in the first half with a 10-0 lead. This isn't just a gym. Look at what it does. It changes lives. It makes thousands confident. Accepting. This isn't just a coach. This coach helps build muscles. Strength. Endurance, self-esteem. This isn't just a ball. It improves concentration, focus, motivation, teamwork. This isn't just a sport. Employees of Time Warner Cable know that not all jobs are created equal. Theirs are better. 
it's not just the fantastic benefits, the latest technology, or newest equipment that make their work lives more satisfying. It's very simply put, the people. Employees of TWC are a team, and you may be able to join that winning group. Just stop by our offices at 3767 All-American Boulevard in Orlando and fill out an application for employment. Come and join the winning team at Time Warner Cable. I really needed to reestablish my credit. Even more, I needed a reliable used car. The people at CarStop were fantastic. I got a great little Toyota. They helped me get financing at a rate and payment I could afford. Right now, pay just $99 a month. Family, sports, and economy cars, even pickups, just $99 a month. They really helped me at a time when I needed it most. Oh, no way to buy a car! Car Stop. America's Car Store. Washington with a 10-0 lead, and they have been impressive defensively in this game. And when you consider that they have eight starters back on defense, nine in offense next year. I think you're looking at a Husky football team that is going to be in the top five in the country. Huskies just dominating the first half in time for possession. Brock Heward, he has led his team to one touchdown drive. Corey Dillon has to 25, hammering to the 27 yard line a gain of seven Washington State has 21 total offensive plays in the first half Corey Dillon has 25 carries in the first half well, I think if you talk to Mike Price and you told him Washington would have 10 points at halftime he'd be pretty pleased with that total the problem is the Washington State offense has just been stagnant I mean, they've committed to a passing style of offense up here in Pullman, and they are not throwing the ball effectively against the Huskies. Well, they'll run it again, try and run it out. And this time, Washington State all over number four, and Shane Doyle and others pull him down. And likely will be the final play of the first half. Yes, Brock Heward running off towards the locker room. Washington. The offensive has given them 10, but the defense has been absolutely brilliant, stuffing one of the fine quarterbacks in college football and the young sophomore Ryan Leaf. But he has had one of his worst first halves this year as Washington State has been shut out by the Husky defense. Washington came in the 12th rated team in the country and with only two losses at eight and two Washington State at five and five still with an outside chance at getting to a bowl game. Let's go down and visit with head coach of Washington State Mike Price. He's with our Larry Burnett. Mike your uh, defense has been able to get you some opportunities. You haven't been able to capitalize. What can you do in the second half. Well we need to catch the ball and we get the opportunity. We're not pass protecting very well. They're bringing a the guy free and we're not we don't have figured out who to block there but I our defense is playing good we're still in this game made a couple of big plays and special teams we've got to come out and get something going on offense no question about you it went into the game wanting to keep Corey Dillon from breaking a big play you've been able to do that yeah. but he's been keeping your defense on the field a long time yeah and our offense three downs now you know we've got to connect uh, they're pressuring us, so it looks like we're going to have to go deep a little bit. All right, look forward to the second okay, half. Really. All right. Thanks. Mike's going to try to get his team going offensively. Problem is, they're going to be kicking off in the second half, so Washington will have the ball to start the third quarter. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Larry. Only 16 for the Cougars, and they completed, what, two passes, but for no yards. 23-59 on time of possession. Only six minutes by Washington State. And the only way Ryan Leaf could engineer a first down was by way of a Husky penalty. You'd have to go a long ways back to find a half of football where Washington State was held to zero yards in the passing game. And that will be the story of the second half. Can Washington State come back through the airways? There is Jim Lambright. 
Boy, he has been to so many Apple Cup games. He talked about the very first that he was part of just yesterday in 1961. Jim told us that he was a freshman, was not eligible to play, and the game was in Spokane. And Jim Owens was going for the Rose Bowl, and he's sitting in the stands, and Don Makita, one of the running backs, cut open his leg, needed 15 stitches, came back in the field, caught a two-point play to put the Huskies in the Rose Bowl, and he said, I knew then that this game was mighty special. Well, this rivalry game has been probably the most balanced of the five rivalry games played throughout the Pac-10 Conference. The home team has won this game the last five years. Washington has not had much success up in Pullman. They've only won one time here since 1986. Jarzinka and Payton, they're kicking it to Jarzinka at the 13. And Joe is upended. He's one of those coming right at you kind of guys. And Joe Jarzinko only goes 5'7", 165. He's the sophomore is upended by Steve Gleason. Also a great job by Tory Holloman getting down the field and getting a piece of the return man. He were 5 for 12 in the first half. Not great numbers, but you don't have to have great numbers when you have Corey Dillon behind you and an offensive line that's on the roll. Scott Linehan, his offensive coordinator, said he's bought into our offense being based on a great running back. And he has been very efficient and has not made mistakes. So they go to that very efficient running back. And Corey Dillon has three yards to the 30-yard line. Second and seven, Johnny Manson on the tackle. The Husky possessions, they go 73 yards on 14 plays the first time they have the football. Then they punt. They fumble. They go 14 plays for 75 yards in the Corey Dillon touchdown. And Corey Dillon closing in on 100 yards rushing. Closing in on 1,500 for the season in all time. Washington record. Going for Payton. He came back for the football, and it's a first down at the 48-yard line. Cola, the cornerback on the outside, man to man, and this ball is underthrown. Not a well-thrown ball, but if you're playing man-to-man -man defense, it's tough to get your eyes back to the quarterback. Nice play by Payton to slow down, play the ball before it hits the turf. So first and ten, past the 48, and Corey Dillon breaking to the outside to the 45 yard line. Gain of six, and Derek Henderson on the tackle. But Brock Hewer being given time, and it's amazing how everything revolves around the run. Washington State can't run, therefore the defensive linebackers can blitz and be in leaf space. Dillon gets five, six yards per carry, and Heward can go with the play action pass and freeze those linebackers. And that big difference in the time of possession the first half, not only a result of Corey Dillon's running, but three and outs by Washington State on almost every offensive possession. Play action, plenty of time again. Gerald Harris was out of bounds when he caught the football. D. Morincola with the coverage. It will be third down and about four yards to go. And I've been impressed by Morincola and Shad Hinchin at the corner positions. Washington State came out in this game. They said, we're going to put eight men on the line of scrimmage, sometimes nine men. That's going to exert a lot of pressure on our quarterbacks. They're going to be left in man-to-man -man coverage almost for the duration. But so far, Morincola and Hinchin more than holding up their end of the bar. His first career start was last year in the Apple Cup, and he had an interception. It's third down. Will they go to Dillon, or will they put it in the air? Heward's going to throw. Incomplete at the 37-yard line. Good coverage by Hinchin. That corner opposite Morincola. Brock Heward... Brock Heward has what he wants here, but he lets this ball go too late. He lets the out route go after Fred Coleman makes his break. A little late pressure there, maybe a, a bit of a late hit, but you're not going to get that call in the Apple Cup game. This is a rugged history behind this 89-game rivalry. 
Sarshar in number 34 awaiting the snap to kick it to Sean Timms. Timms to the bear catches the 10 yard line and that's where the Cougars will start their offense. Down 10 points with 90 yards to go. We've got 13 minutes to play here in the third quarter. The Huskies by 10. of customers count on GTE people. GTE quality. GTE reliability. So if you think telecommunications have only complicated your life, there's one company you can count on for help. Please, please help me. GTE. Help me, help me. Amazing. These are the biggest feet in pro basketball. Shoe size 21. If you think the shoes are hard to fill, imagine what it takes to fill the rest of it. Big boy. Well, new cheese tortellini from Chunky Foots the Bill. It's loaded with giant ring-shaped pasta stuffed with cheese, plus huge chunks of chicken and tons of vegetables. So if you've got a giant appetite to feed, Chunky Cheese Tortellini scores with the big boys. Satisfied? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Campbell's Chunky. Soup that eats like a meal. Husky, guaranteed forever, and only at the Home Depot. With the help of the college fund, I went to college. It prepared me for graduate school and other challenges, like being married to this guy. Help young people reach their potential. A mind is a terrible thing to waste. Please support the college fund. What do you mean, challenge? Washington's defense has absolutely shut out the Cougar offense. It was punt first four times they have the football. Then they went for it on fourth down. Only made seven yards on four plays, and they had to punt on their sixth opportunity in the first half, but only six minutes on offense. So Ryan Leaf, it's not like he's tired or anything. They come sprinting out on offense. Flag will go down. Leaf covered it up at the five yard line. And Leaf is limping as he gets up. Well, this is a dead ball foul, so no fumble. Just a matter of whether there was early movement. I think they're going to march the Cougars back here. Before the snap, full start. Offense, half the distance to the goal. Still first down. Cougars offensively have not done much right this evening. One of the strengths of the three wide out offense, the three receivers with the tight end and the single back set, is if you hit a pass, you have the defense spread out. You have some broken, a broken tackle, you have a big play, but Leaf's got to hit a few passes first. Again, man coverage on both wide outs. Leaf finally with some time going deep. Broken up beautifully. What a play by Mel. But did he have too much of the intended receiver? That flag came in awfully late. He was like a blanket all over his man. And Ryan Leaf trying to buy time in the pocket, dangerously close to being dropped for a safety here, just unloads the ball down the field on the post route. He's looking for Chad Carpenter. Good call. Very good call. Mel Miller first down. with an arm over around the neck of the receiver. And David, if he just doesn't put the hand on the shoulder, I think he makes the play anyway. Well, Mel Miller played the ball perfectly except for the contact just before the ball arrived. Good call. Ryan Leaf operating first down. first first down that Washington State has had in the game outside of penalties. Impressive job of blocking up front. Scott Sanderson, potential all-pack 10 candidate at the left tackle spot, opening up a seam right up the middle. The key on that last play was the tackle by Tony Parrish in the secondary. Tony Parrish has quickly become one of the best free safeties on the West Coast. 
and a very sure tackler. If Michael Black can break that tackle, he's off to the races. That was the longest play from scrimmage in the game for Washington State. He started his drive from her own 10 yard line. scrimmage Jason Chorak was right there big fellow from Lashawn Washington his dad was born in Croatia left in 1962 and Jason very proud of his Serbian Croatian heritage As a matter of fact he speaks both English and Serbian Serb Croatian you talk to the defensive coordinators that have lined up Offenses, actually the offensive coordinators that have lined up offenses against Chorak, and they always mention his name first. He's the guy you got to stop. He's on the right side. And a fumble on the snap, and I believe Washington has it. center quarterback exchange very sloppy game by the Cougars so far now that ball might not have come up I can't I cannot lay the blame on Ryan Leaf there because the ball did not look like it came up and watch the reaction by Inc. Aliaga coming into the season a pre-season All-America he's all over that fumble covering the football on the turf Close to a first down, a 100-yard rushing game again for Corey Dillon. Well, they're just pounding away at that Cougars middle, and they've got a very good middle with Leon Bender and Gary Holmes. But Corey, with 113 yards rushing today, is six straight over 100, and that is almost the time of the season when they started him after the injury to Rashawn Sheehy. sprints 19 yards to the one yard line and as a defense if you watch your offense go on the field time and time again and not produce yards it becomes frustrating and sometimes letdowns can occur Washington State not playing the run very tough up the middle Corey Dillon exposes and exploits the weakness up the middle and he's just a half yard from scoring on this play. Bender, the tackle, coming inside. He may have hurt his elbow, maybe his shoulder on that play. You know, he had that ankle sprain that he suffered in the Stanford game. Didn't practice much this week, but they're really looking at his upper body. They caught the Cougars straight up the middle. Great execution by the offensive line once again for Washington. They are so good at center and guard. Bob Sapp, Olin Krutz, Benji Olson, who has already been named first team All American by Football News. And they have a running back who gets right behind him. Scott Linehan told us yesterday he's either going to be embedded in your back or your by your side. He really follows his blocks very well. Here's another angle. You see how he got the injury there. Maybe a knee or an ankle problem. It might be that right knee or that right ankle. Bender had no indication that was coming from the outside. He's had a great year for Washington State. The front four has been so effective. Six and a half sacks. 
Arizona State is punishing Arizona and looks to go to the Rose Bowl unbeaten and probably the number three team in the nation after Ohio State lost. UCLA was down 17 in the fourth and they win in two overtimes over the Trojans. Stanford has beaten Cal 42 to 21, so Cal's bid for a bowl game this year looks to have evaporated, and Stanford might be going bowling. And Oregon, hey, they're hoping as well after a nice finish. It looks like Stanford may be headed to the Sun Bowl. In fact, I would be surprised if the Cardinal is not headed to the Sun Bowl. What a turnaround by Tyrone Willingham and his troops. Like four or five weeks ago, that Stanford outfit was left for dead. And they have finished with a bang this season. They will finish third in the Pac-10 with a record of five and three. Six and five overall. Uh-oh. I believe that is past the neutral zone. James Darling. I think he knew number four was going to get the football. James Darling, just a touch overzealous, I'd say. <laughs> Up and over the top. Offside, defense, half the distance to the goal, still first down. Well, you might as well go for it in this territory. It's not like they can give you five yards into the end zone. That's a good point. That's actually not a bad play by James Darling. Certainly not as costly as the four offsides penalties charged against the Cougars earlier in this ballgame. Dillon will try and move within one of Marcus Allen and O.J. Simpson. 21 rushing touchdowns in the season. There's the handoff. He pushes. Is he in? Yes, he is. Touchdown, Corey Dillon. about mission impossible first and goal from the half yard line trying to stop Corey Dillon at 225 pounds they call him the mule and he bull his way in that time John Wales for the point after it is up it is good and Washington with a 17 nothing lead on their arch rivals Washington State Corey Dillon with 22 overall touchdowns this year, 21 on the ground. What I like so much about Corey Dillon, he keeps that consistent demeanor. You can see it in his eyes, the focus. Doesn't ever get too excited. No matter whether it's a one-yard run or a 50-yard run, he comes to the game with a business-like attitude. And Washington so far taking care of business up 17 early in the second half. Let's go down to the field and Larry Burnett. Well, Steve, with all the problems the Cougars offense has had recently, you'd expect maybe they'd be down a little bit, especially with that last drive when they fumbled the ball a couple of times. But their offensive line coach, Lawrence Livingston, just told his guys, hey, the ball slipped. We're doing a good job. We're breaking some room for Michael Black. We're getting good protection for Ryan Leaf. They like what they're doing. They think they can get themselves right back in this football game. But they've had two special team plays that have really hurt them, where they have not capitalized on mistakes by Washington. And the Huskies laid the ball on the carpet one time and they could not score well, they just gave one to the Huskies and the Huskies only took it 30 yards if I'm Ryan Leaf I get my headgear snapped on tight because the pass rush is coming I can assure you that Washington up 17 points they're going to be sending a lot of people at Ryan Leaf very short kick again Sean Timms line exactly where he caught the football. Lester Towns on the coverage. And here comes Ryan Lee. Corey Dillon with 131 yards rushing. Two touchdowns. Since he moved into the starting lineup, he has averaged not only 165 yards rushing per game, but also three touchdowns per game. We mentioned he's leading the country in scoring. What's up, Here's a look at him. Saying hi to his mom, who, yes, she does live in Seattle, Washington. High school, he still lives with his mom. Michael Black, 
Michael Black for the short game. You have to admire Mike Price's stick to it as, as I might call it, the commitment to the running game, but he's going to have to put the ball up. And he knows it. He's going to have to mix in a couple running plays to keep the Huskies somewhat honest up front. We're going to see quite a few attempts here in the second half by Ryan Lee. Huskies showing a four-man front, but they've got Hank Aliaga in that gap. Jason Chorak with another sack. He forced the fumble. And David Ritchie may have recovered. Yes, he did. Ryan Leaf never saw it coming. And he should. He's got to pick up the pressure. He's focused on the left side. The hit by Chorak, and Richie makes a recovery. The ball in midair is picked off by Richie. Watch Chorak. Just a relentless pass rush. Lays his helmet right on the football. And Richie, a heads-up play to snatch that football out of midair. Nice job, baby. Nice job. He's real excited. Nice Apple Cup game. Big turnover. Last year, he didn't play much in the Apple Cup game. He hurt his neck, but he is fully recovered. Heward going for the home run on first down. Corey Dillon has it knocked away. James Darling, the middle linebacker with a pretty defensive play. Number 33, James Darling. Liz Jason Shore, 14 and a half sacks this year. Leads the Pac-10. They've been putting him on the left side because the right side of the offensive line really is not the Cougar's strength. Brock Hewer taking a shot down the middle to Corey Dillon, and that's a super job by James Darling at the last second, looking back for the football. Watch him play the ball with the left hand. That was a touchdown if Darling doesn't make the play. Well, they've got Terry Holloman in the game, the junior from Everett, Washington. That's an interesting story. Terry, his brother, is Tory Holloman, who is a reserve safety for Washington State. So you got a little civil war here. Brothers on each side, one on the east, one on the west. That's a smart decision by Jim Lambright, his offensive coordinator, Scott Linehan. You send Corey Dillon down the middle of the field. He has close to 30 carries in the game. Why not sub for him? Don't get him tired. Last week, after 16 carries in the first quarter against San Jose State, he was spent. <laughs> sure he's been he hasn't been disappointed that they've been averaging only about 15 attempts per game and that's the benefit you have you get right there with a great running game if you drop back to pass or even better yet if you come out on play action you're usually going to be looking at some open receivers not a great throw by Brock Heward but an easy throw Fred Coleman takes advantage Washington already leading by 17 Dillon to the five, and he is stopped there. Four, Jill, number four, during the ball of the hockey. James Darling, Dwayne Stewart making too many tackles in this game. Anytime your linebackers and your safeties are up in double figures and tackles, you're saying, uh oh, our defense is on the field too long. Washington State has done a good job this year up front. Their front four has accounted for 28 sacks coming into this game. And I think they've done a pretty good job against Corey Dillon. Even though Dillon's stacking up some numbers, it's the Washington State offense that has not gotten untracked in this Apple Cup game. And they turned the ball over twice in the second half. Dillon, touchdown! And he has tied the Pac-10 record for most rushing touchdowns in a season. Tying Heisman Trophy winners O.J. Simpson and Marcus Allen. seen history on this play some great running backs in USC history and Corey Dillon equals the mark 
Look how calm he is. Heading over to the offensive line to congratulate them. Point after touchdown is good, and Washington has a 24-0 lead. USC was always known for being the tailback U of the Pac-10. Well, Corey Dillon's changing that. The Pacific 10 Conference. Its academic and athletic excellence are as great as the area it encompasses. Stretching from the state of Washington in the Northwest to Arizona in the Southwest. Unparalleled in athletic success, the Pac-10 has won more NCAA championships than any other conference. The 10 members have been providing the best in quality higher education for more than a century. The Pac-10, the conference of champions. 60 men and three rings. Think of what could happen, man. Only one can reign supreme. It's WCW's World War III. Sunday, November 24th, live and only on pay-per-view. Ring-rocking wrestling action. See it at home on pay-per-view. Order WCW World War III and you'll automatically be entered for a chance to go see WCW Starcade live December 29th. Listen to WJRR for details. Hey, Fonz? Uh, Fonz? Hey, this better be important. Is it true that Happy Days is on Nick at Night? Correct the window. It's a classic show, huh? Fab window. And it's on Nick at Night every weeknight? Exact the window. Thanks, Fonz. You're the greatest. Hey. Watch Happy Days every weeknight only on Nick at Night, the home of classic TV. Band member, he's got cookies on his drum set. He's enjoying this Washington 24-0 lead. Well, today's power bar performer of the week, Corey Dillon of Washington, 222 yards rushing in the first quarter alone against San Jose State. That is an NCAA record. It broke Andre Herrera's record of 214 set by Southern Illinois some 20 years ago. Corey Dillon with his third rushing touchdown. His 22nd this year. And I mentioned the fact that USC was always tailback you. But when you consider Napoleon Kaufman and Greg Lewis, Rashawn Sheehy, and now Corey Dillon, here is a new tailback you in the Pac-10 Conference. And it's in Seattle. Washington State gets the football to the 32-yard line. Everything that Mike Price hoped would happen in the second half has not, as his offense has put the ball on the turf twice. And Washington has turned both turn, uh, fumbles into touchdowns. Seven minutes, 46 seconds to go in this game. Mike Price knows it's still not over. Now, this is a very important drive for Washington State. If they don't come up with a score on this drive, this game may be over. Against this defense, I think you're right with Michael Black. Attempting the middle and gaining two yards. Jerry Jensen and Ink Aliaga on the tackle. Now with the two-point conversion in college football, Washington State still down only three scores. They got to get to work immediately. And they have the type of offense. Look at Aliaga's career. That's very impressive. And he's really been coming on the last three or four games. The Washington State is well equipped with their type of offense to come back. Jorak inside as a defensive tackle. Black trying the left side gets back to the line of scrimmage. It'll be third down and eight as David Ritchie makes the tackle. We're not sure why Mike Price is keeping the ball on the ground. He even put two backs in the game on that last play. There's no doubt if Washington State has any hopes. Hey David, you they talked to about pick up a first down. The advantages of a one-back offense. What are the disadvantages of a one-back offense? Protecting the passer and also running the football when you need to. You give up an extra blocker when you only have one back in the back. Where they're going shotgun now with one back and four wide out. Lead three-step drop and there's a flag. It must have had something to do with Sean McWashington. Because Tony Parrish's coverage appeared to be clean on the receiver that he was covering. This should be an automatic first down for Washington State. Maybe a hold. Maybe pass interference. 
Washington State very lucky if they do pick up a first down here. Ryan Leaf had a man wide open on the out route and missed him. I have not been impressed with Leaf's accuracy in this game so far. Probably going to be a hold here defensively against Washington, which is an automatic first down. Ryan Leaf came into this game. Holding defense, 10 yards from the previous spot, automatic first down. Leaf came into this game with a sophomore year that's better than Drew Bledsoe's, better than Tim Rosenbaugh's, better than Jack Thompson. But he has had one of those games that he would like to forget. He has not been able to get any points for his offense. And they're spreading everybody out, keeping one back in and Michael Black. ball by Ryan Leaf on the fade route. Watch how he gives his wide receiver room to fade out to the football. And Carpenter does a great job of sealing Miller off and then drifting outside just at the last second to make the catch. That's a perfect hookup between quarterback and wide receiver on the fade. And the first catch of the game for the pride of Weezer, Idaho. They'll run Mike Black. He's at the 25. And Put a little uh, half rope on him. Look at the Huskies changing their defenses on, on flashcards. They've got Vanna White out there all dressed up. No, that's not Vanna. <laughs> Turning the letters over there, huh, Steve? Hit. Now, I'm not sure that's the complete play call. That may be a play call within a play call defensively for Washington. Inside the 20 for the first down. Michael Black. Washington sending their defensive calls in on play card. Placards there. Probably some indications on how they want to play the linebackers or their blitzes. Michael Black starting to get a little forward push in the running game. Absolutely critical for Washington State to come up with a touchdown on this drive. Inside six minutes to play third quarter. Carpenter in single coverage on the right side. So too is a man on the left. Chris Jackson. Run black again. Big hole again. And Michaels inside the 10-yard line. John Fiala on the tackle. an impressive job by Washington State's offensive line. They're looking at a nine-man defensive front here, and still they find a way to get it blocked and to spring Michael Black into the secondary. I mean, the Huskies are just locking up man-to-man -man on the outside. I think Ryan Leaf, Ryan Leaf should take a shot at another fade ball. The Leaf and the Cougars have taken the timeout as Black gets him inside the 10 yard line will be second down and four yards to go. That's good solid running by Michael Black. He was a couple steps from breaking that into the end zone. Great crowd here at Martin Stadium in Pullman, Washington. Despite all of the bad weather they had through the week and snow is predicted later tonight. It's kind of interesting, Jim Lambright, who is the head coach for the University of Washington, he got up Tuesday morning at 6 o'clock in the morning. He opened his drapes. He saw six inches of snow and looked to the heavens and said, thank you, God. And they went out and he said, don't anybody clear off the practice field. And Jim Lambright, he said, guys, we're going to practice on the snow at Husky Stadium. They did that. They had a little snowball fight between the coaches and the players. And they got all geared up for this cold weather, and they have played well. It was snowing yesterday, and it really looked like it was going to snow.
snow some more today, but a break in the weather. Not quite the day that Jim Lambright expected in Pullman. The last two times the Huskies have come up to Pullman in 1992 and 1994, very snowy days, and the Huskies got hit with a couple big defeats in those ball games. Yeah, that 92 game was Drew Bledsoe in that blizzard. Washington State got all fired up. First eight drives, whew, this is their best drive of the day, no question, but they still have not scored. Still over five minutes to go in the third quarter. Black and someone moved too quickly. Inexcusable. Michael Black carry the ball, Black on the play. Rock Heward trying to stay warm on that sideline. Temperatures now dropping inside the high 20s. That's inexcusable for an offense to come out of a timeout before the snap. False start. Offense. Five yards from the previous spot. And it's still second down. Washington State comes out of a timeout. They have second and short. They should have everything ironed out. And sloppy execution at the line of scrimmage turns it into a second and long. Those are the types of mistakes you can't make against a team that's ranked number 12 in the country. Chris Jackson goes wide right. Chad Carpenter goes wide left. Both receivers will be in simple man coverage by the defensive backs. Leaf going corner. Carpenter incomplete. And Chad will complain thinking he was interfered with as he came back towards that football. Certainly very physical coverage there by Jermaine Smith. Watch the fake to the post and then back outside on the corner out. The ball's delivered back over his head though. Once again, Ryan Leaf. There was a shot though with the ball in the air, David. There was some contact there. That, that might have been pass interference, but the ball was thrown so poorly that you know, it's tough to give the call to the offense there when Ryan Leaf misfires. That ball should have been thrown to the front cone of the end zone. Instead, it was thrown six yards deep. Washington, you can tell, has shut him down. Only 26 yards through the air. Blitz on. Carpenter! I think he's got the first down. You don't think so, huh? They needed to get to the seven-yard line. He might be just a little bit short. And Leaf starting to come up with some plays that he didn't make in the first half. He faced some pressure on that play. Did a good job of getting rid of the ball quickly. C Carpenter disappointed. Watch the quick release with Fiala coming right up the gut. And Carpenter, instead of staying north and south, moving vertically, he cuts back to the left, and that may have cost him the first down. It did. Well, you picked that up right away. No, he didn't get the first down. You are correct, sir. <laughs> but Carpenter, after the catch there, if he just keeps moving straight down the field, I think he has a, a better chance to pick up the first down. Carpenter, very savvy guy. Great receiver for Washington State over the last three years. And he was the best quarterback in all of Ohio in high school. Came into, the game, came into the game with over 100 career catches. Will Leaf sneak it? He goes 6'5", 235 pounds. No, they're going to give it to the second back through. And I believe Dewan Gilmore will get the first down. Number 37, Dewan Gilmore. When you talk to NFL scouts up and down the West Coast, they say, hey, Tarek Glenn's a good tackle down at Cal. Juan Roque, certainly a fine player at Arizona State. But Scott Sanderson, the left tackle for Washington State, is big and athletic. And on the biggest play of the game, Washington State runs right over Sanderson to pick up the first down. First and goal from the six. Michael Black. No, forget it. There, Jason Chorak was there, and so is John Fiala and David Ritchie. And I think Ryan Leaf is going to have to make a play here. He's going to have to make a play if the Cougars are going to get into the end zone. Well, he made some pretty good plays against Washington last year in that 33-30 loss. He threw for 291 yards and a touchdown, and he also ran into. Look for a fade here on the outside. Six 
six-yard line. Chris Jackson, the junior from Santa Ana High School, played his high school football. Santa Ana, California, played his high school football in great modern-day program. You have to hand it to these young quarterbacks for Washington. Mel Miller, Jermaine Smith, who was on coverage on the last play. They play with some audacity. They're brash, they're bold, they come up in, in your face. And very good over the course of this ball game. I think their corners are just sensational. Leaf pumps, buys himself some time. It is broken up. Mel Miller. You know, when you take a look at what Washington had defensively, they had two question marks at the beginning of the season, and they were at the corners. There's one of them, Mel Miller. They're both redshirt freshmen. They have grown up enormously this year. And all year long, defensive coordinators have tried to go after their cornerbacks, but the cornerbacks have not wilted. Ryan Leaf with a lot of time. Washington really only with three players rushing the passer on that play. Leaf could have bought some more time. He really forced the ball into the back of the end zone. And the Cougars down 24, going for the three, and they get it. Washington State had scored in their last 163 straight Pac-10 games, the longest in the Pac-10 during that spot span. They will make it 164 because of that three-pointer. It's a start, but is it enough? If your idea of freedom involves sliding down a snow-covered mountain with wild abandon, call Southwest Airlines. We fly to great ski places in New Mexico, Nevada, and Utah. Packages include round-trip airfare, two nights hotel accommodations, rental car or transfers, and lift tickets. But not lessons. Fun pack vacations from Southwest Airlines, a symbol of freedom. A truck's life is filled with slings and arrows, including the inevitable flying stones and unmanned shopping carts. So we designed the all-new Dodge Dakota with software that optimizes dent resistance. Life on the road may be a battle, but Dakota has superior armor. The new Dodge Dakota. It's full of surprises. The flower is perfect in every way. You, however, could use some work. The Soloflex Muscle Machine. 32 real weightlifting exercises with none of the hassles of free weights. Call now for a free brochure and video. talked about Mike Price putting that videotape together this week to boost Ryan Leaf's confidence. Well, he is talking with him on the sideline after Leaf engineered a nice drive, but got him three instead of seven. Mike Price coaches the quarterbacks, unusual for a head coach, and he's a mastermind. He's had Bledsoe and Rosenbach. Done a great job with Ryan Leaf. Sometimes you chew on a quarterback, sometimes you give him encouragement, and Right now, Mike Price looks like he's given a lot of encouragement to leave on the side. Three and a half minutes left. Jarzinga, courageous fellow, takes it again past the 30. And not near the 40-yard line. He's a tough little kid, isn't he? <laughs> you talk about a thrill seeker. I mean, he's been taking punts and kickoffs with just yards to spare. People breathing hot air down his neck. He's made some big plays in this Apple Cup game. He, he really has. I can see his nickname ought to be 82nd Airborne. I'll bet that's what he does. He jumps out of airplanes after he graduates. A 61-yard drive. The Cougar fans, they still think they're in it. Down 21 with 324 left in the third period. Dylan, just a couple. He now has 142 yards rushing and the three scores today. And Brandon Moore takes it down. Arizona 
Arizona State. They're in the third, and it looks like they'll go to Pasadena with an unbeaten record and likely to move up to three after Ohio State's loss today. UCLA beats USC in two overtimes. Stanford by California. And Oregon wins over Oregon State 49-13. Here is Washington, 24. Washington State, three. Just two to the 44, Dorian Booz in the tackle. Dorian Booz, number nine, in the tackle. You're really playing a game of Russian roulette on the outside in the secondary. Washington State having to commit so many defenders to counter that Washington Husky running game. And as a result, you're playing man-to-man -man coverage, play after play. D. Moore and Colo, Shad Hinchin on the outsides. They've done a pretty good job over the course of this game. Playing up tight on Payton and Coleman. This ball club has been very good today on third down. They've sent three wide right, one left. Fewer will dump it off to his tight end. They will not get the first down this time. Read beautifully by strong safety Dwayne Stewart. Lawson also helping out the defensive tackle who came in to replace the injured Leon Bender. Just a heroic effort by Stewart to break through. He was one of the only defenders left to play that screen pass. He cut through and made a super open field tackle. Sarshar will punt to Tims who stands in his own 21. but he'll lose a good 10 yards on the play. Just a 33-yard punt by Sarsha, but he got help by the guy Tim's trying to return. Boy, when you make a big mistake, you got to get back and cover it up. Even though Tim's drops the punt, he muffs the punt there, a great job of getting back and knocking that ball out of bounds. Tim's didn't try to recover the football. He just wanted to make sure... He lost that it his, in the moon, David. That his movement <laughs> forced that ball out of bounds. Pretty night in Coleman. It's clear. Wow. It was somewhat clear. Leap on the delay. Oh, look at this. I mean, Inkaliaga, Jason Chorak, all over it. Chris Campbell, the defensive end, was there as well. Hey, Larry Burnett, are you enjoying this one after your wonderful weekend in Eugene last week? You know, it's actually getting colder down here, if you can believe that. Keep an eye on the Cougars. On their last drive, they had a lot of success running to the weak side. They'd like to run the sweep for the strong side. They've also been trying to catch Washington off guard with some quick snaps, but the Cougar offensive lineman can't hear the call, and they've been jumping off sides. They'd like to try it some more. The Huskies really were just a brilliant defensive game. You've got to have great corners to start with. Well, you have to have great corners, especially when you play an eight-man defensive front, because you're going to leave them on an island so many times. They're called on to play man-to-man -man defense. Let's see if Mel Miller times this up properly. That should have been pass interference. Mel Miller went through the back of Char Chad Carpenter's head before the ball arrived. Clearly should have been pass interference. But you have to respect Jermaine Smith and Miller. They play an aggressive brand of ball on the outside. Incomplete. Incomplete. Looking for Sean Timms. And it will be fourth down. They've got to punt it away again. Chris Campbell was in the backfield again. Leaf has been pinched by those DBs. And he's faced some pressure. And Leaf is going to be around for a long time. He's going to move on. He's going to play pro football. Perfect size. Great build. i just like to see him improve his, his fundamentals a little bit and also get that accuracy together. 
Yeah, you're right. Five of 20 tonight for just 34 yards. There's Jarsinka. Jarsinka. This guy is something. He is really something. I'm going to call him the thrill seeker from now on. <laughs> With that hair, he, he doesn't make it in the pros. I'm telling you, he, can, he has a future on Baywatch. He's the Yanni of college football. <laughs> Is your danger sending the wrong signals? You're out! Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue number one, so don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. Steve Young for Power Bar. If you wanted to create a source of energy that was as healthy, nutritious, and low in fat as this Power Bar Energy Bar, here's what you'd have to do. Start with real fruit and other natural sweeteners. Add grains for complex carbs. Put in a whole bunch of important vitamins and minerals and top it off with a splash of protein. Then you have the energy top athletes and active people rely on to perform at their best. Personally, I think you'd be better off buying a power bar. Customers count on GTE people. GTE quality. GTE reliability. So if you think telecommunications have only complicated your life, there's one company you can count on for help. Won't you please, please help me? GTE. Help me, help me. Amazing. These are the biggest feet in pro basketball. Shoe size 21. If you think the shoes are hard to fill, imagine what it takes to fill the rest of it. Big boy. Well, new cheese tortellini from Chunky foots the bill. It's loaded with giant ring-shaped pasta stuffed with cheese, plus huge chunks of chicken and tons of vegetables. So if you've got a giant appetite to feed, Chunky Cheese Tortellini scores with the big boys. Satisfied? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I thought so. Campbell's Chunky, soup that eats like a meal. Huh? Is your danger sending the wrong signals? You're out! Get Selsun Power. Doctors recommend Selsun Blue number one, so don't send the wrong signals. Get Selsun Power. The Internet. Billions of miles of cable connecting millions of people, including some of the best and brightest minds in the country, the students and alumni of the Pac-10 universities. Advertise your full-time, part-time, or internship opportunity. Contact your Pac-10 Career Center or call JobTrack online. 1-800-999-TRACK. Get on your feet. Get up and make it happen. Get on your feet, yeah, yeah. Stand up and take some action. Get on your feet. I hate dings in the door. I have this one terrible one. Uh, some fool comes along out of the grocery store and just bangs right in the side. And then, of course, he's looking around. Nobody else can see him but me. He's banged, and I have this huge dent. But my owner can't always get to him, you know, right away to get him fixed. But I think she tries to make up for it. She gives me Chevron Supreme with Tecron because I'm a car designed for high-octane gas. No premium outperforms Chevron Supreme with Tecron. Chevron, simply smarter. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of Washington State University and the Pac-10 Conference and is intended solely for the non-commercial use of our audience and may not be rebroadcast in any form without the express written consent of Washington State University and the Pac-10 Conference. John Wales will attempt the field goal from 37 yards out. He's the senior from Kent, Washington. got the distance and he just misses off to the side it is no good it stays 24 to 3 
So it's up for Ryan Leaf and Corey Dillon. That might be, he may have played his last of the game. I mean, his ball club's up by three touchdowns. He's got his three scores. This game is not over yet. 10.59 to go. Washington State down three scores. They got to get to work immediately. And I think Mike Price has to go with a no huddle offense starting right now. Clock offense doesn't always begin with two minutes to go in the game. It begins when you have to start battling the clock. Washington State needs to lengthen this game. Well, they're going double tight end now. Well, go play action pass. Leaf loses the football as he tried to throw it deep. I mean, it just slipped out of his hands. And Ryan Leaf was looking for it all down the field. He had he had two receivers deep on the streak. A nice play action fake. And the ball just slips out of his hand before he gets that arm moving forward. Heads up play to cover it in the backfield, but Ryan Leaf had a great shot down the right side on the streak. And he just lets go of the football. And this is the kid from Great Falls, Montana, who says he loves to, to play in the cold weather. He has not played well tonight. Wide open Sean Timms at the 35-yard line. And again, Leaf could not find him. And he is furious with himself in the back of the end zone. Well, Leaf should be furious with himself on that play. He had Timms wide open. A bust in the defensive secondary by Washington. Nobody covering Tims. And granted, Leaf had some pressure in the pocket, but you just have to put a little air under that throw and make sure, make sure you don't overthrow him. Whatever you do, don't overthrow the receiver, even if he has to slow down to make the catch. Now Washington State spreads everybody out. Five wide receivers, three left, two right. Sean Timms, he's got it. First down, Washington State. 48 yards, the longest throw by Ryan Leaf of the day. And that almost doubles his passing total for the evening. On a third and 19, Washington State goes with the hitch and go. A great pump fake by Leaf there. And the cornerback just bites on the arm fake. Well, they were not picking on those talented cornerbacks, Mel Miller or Jermaine Smith. That was the slot man, Sean Timms, who was being covered by a linebacker. Black. He's not getting much on the ground. Michael, very fortunate to get back to the line of scrimmage, then gains three more to the 40-yard line, where he is brought down by Ink Aliaga. My question is, why didn't they go to the pump and go a little bit earlier? Those cornerbacks have been playing aggressively all game long. They've been playing... Snug right up on Tims and McWashington. Carpenter. I think Leaf needs to take some more cracks down the field. Penalize Washington for playing this gambling style of defense in the secondary. With well, a rushing four. They've got another one open. This time it's Kevin McKenzie with the catch. And he will go to the three-yard line. Washington defense has plenty of testosterone. They are really playing a brash type of defense on the outside. A play after getting hurt big on the Tims reception. Washington going right back to man-to-man -man defense, and Leaf stings him again. This time, McKenzie. McKenzie just a step from getting into the end zone. And I got a message for the Huskies. If the Cougars can punch it into the end zone here, we have a ball game. Well, Jerry Jensen, one of their top linebackers, is out of the game now. And they have the four very best linebackers in this conference. The Huskies have done a great job defensively so far tonight. Well, they better be careful. They're giving up some big plays all of a sudden in the passing game. A guy can Racing in untouched is Ryan Leaf. Boy, did he make him bite. And a great play call by Price.
face in conjunction with his offensive coordinator, John McDonnell. The fake into the line. Nobody knew Ryan Leaf had the ball. It is 24 to 10. 24 to 9. They're trying to make it 10. With the point after touchdown by Tony Truant. And Tony has it good. And Washington State is within 14 with 8 minutes and 50 seconds to go. Will leave with a brilliant drive that started miserably with a pass that slipped through his hand and then missing a wide open receiver. He comes back and scores the touchdown. Talk to John McDonald, the offensive coordinator, and he said, oh, John, don't forget about faking the off tackle play and having Leaf keep it in a short yard situation. We've got to get to that play. Sure enough, it's a key play here in the fourth quarter. And with eight minutes and 50 seconds to go, the Cougars are only down by two touchdowns. Well, Truant blasts this one through the end zone, so the Huskies will have it at their own 20-yard line. Let's go down on the field and Larry. All right, the scoreboard's still looking good for Washington, but the sideline not looking too good at all. Jerry Jensen came off the field a while ago. They're working on his ankle. And Corey Dillon is right behind us. He has a cramp in his right calf, may have cramps in both calves. They've put a little wrap on the right calf. He's been trying to run it off. We'll see when they get the ball if he's going to get back in the game. Right now, it doesn't look like he is. And they will have Terry Holloman in the game for the resting Corey Dillon. six yards he's a tough kid to bring down he had 146 yards rushing last week against San Jose State when three Husky backs ran for over 100 yards the Washington State Cougars need the ball back right now they need a three and out and you'd think with Corey Dillon on the bench it would be advantage Cougars but Holloman coming in and ripping off a seven yard run on first down 42 yards rushing stops Holloman. Boy, I like him. He's a zoology major, wants to be a dentist, also wants to spend some time in the NFL, and his coach Mike Price says he's going to knock teeth out on Sunday and put him back in on Monday. Darling's had to. There's a movement up front. Once again, he were doing a great job at quarterback on the cadence, but Darling's had some well-documented problems off the field. Mike Price has assured us that he's gotten those problems straightened out. And he's one of the new breed of linebackers that moves on to the NFL. He can run and he can hit. 6 1 2 40. Third down. They're going back to Holloman. It's not there. The Cougars have held. play for Washington State. Second and short for the Huskies. Two run plays, and they're denied by the Cougars. Washington State's going to get the ball back with over six and a half minutes to go in this game. Plenty of time for Ryan Lee to bring his team back. Sarshar has not had a hunt block this year. Seven yards better than his average. High snap. He gets it off in time. It is not a particularly great punt. But it takes a good bounce inside the 40-yard line. Well, Washington trying to hold off their rival Cougars. They have a 14-point lead with six and a half to play. Washington has a seven-point lead. They'll be receiving the football on the kickoff. David, do you think Mike Price will go for an onside kick with 346 left? Absolutely not. 100% no. 346 to go. Washington State has two timeouts. If you try an onside kick and you don't recover it, the Huskies are only 10 yards away from a field goal. That puts them up by 10 points, and the game's out of reach. The way Washington State's been playing on defense here, especially in the fourth quarter, kick it deep. Well, they have nine of 
their 11 up expecting an onside kick. I'll be shocked. And Truant, watch the ball. <laughs> you know, it looked like they were going to kick it deep because those guys are really coming after him and they weren't going in one location. I'm almost expecting to hear the Jeopardy song coming up here. The, sus <laughs> the suspense continues. Now I'll be I'll be flat out shocked if Washington State tries an onside kick here. There's Jarzinka, only man back. Through and hammers it. And it is Mike Reed who's the other man along with Jarzinka who lets it go. It's amazing how much of a chess game football can be. I'm a little bit surprised that Lambright put the hands team in there, and Lambright will probably chew into me during the off week coming up, but I think it's only logical for Washington State to kick the ball deep. The defense has had a lot of success in the fourth quarter. Actually, they just corrected on the scoreboard one timeout. Look who's back in. Corey Dillon, the best back in the Pac-10 Conference. He has had that hand on his right leg massaged out. And he wants to play. He goes off tackle left. No. One-yard gain. Well, this is why the coaches get paid the big dollars. There's going to be an interesting play call coming up. Dillon, just a little move to the left side on the isolation play. Not much running room. Now, this is going to be a chess game. He can't go. 38 carries in this game for 155 yards, and now they must pull their best running back. Can you depend on a backup like Mike Reed, who only has 95 yards rushing? Brock Heward's going to have to hit a pass, either on second or third down. And Heward might be checking off, really go to his running back. Probably not. He just brought up Reed as a blocking back. They run the fade. Payton! And there's a flag down. Well, I'm surprised the referee didn't throw a flag earlier in the backfield. There was some movement. The Husky running back did not get set up. I believe that was Keohoe. We throw a snap. Delay game on the offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still second down. Hewer just didn't get the playoff. That was Mike Reed, the fullback in the backfield for the Huskies. He wasn't even set up on the snap of the football. The Huskies having some problems with the crowd noise here in Pullman. Well, it is up to Brock Hewer now, the son of a football coach. South of Seattle. And he's going to go back to a fade route. I'm almost sure of it. He's going to throw that deep ball outside, either on this down or next down. Safety blitz. Incomplete at midfield. Morin Cola with a great breakup. Good call, David. And I won't be surprised if they go right back to that fade. The reason why you call the fade route is you get man-to-man -man outside and it's a safe throw. You don't risk the turnover. Also, Brock Heward throws the fade ball exceptionally well. Heward threw a good ball on that play, but the coverage breaks up the potential reception. Heward, not a happy man. 7 of 18 now through the air and only 65 yards passing in this game. Play action. With time. was there, but it went right into the numbers of Jerome Payton, their most sure-handed receiver. That was a misplay on the ball by the defensive backfield. Payton ended up having a great shot to bring that ball down on the post route. Jerry Jensen's back in, snapping. He's the man playing with the injured ankle. Sarshar standing at his three. It's a low snap. He gets it off. Not a good kick. Fair catch by Tims at the 41. Can you believe this? Down 24 points, and Washington 
State has a chance to tie this game up or even take the lead. Two and a half left. I mean, we thought they were absolutely going to get blown out of this stadium. Mike Price is even stunned. here between Tim's and Carpenter underneath and just like Tim's on the scoring play in the last possession Carpenter a great job of working downfield there's a there's a face mask too out of bounds there that the referees missed the officials missed that on the sideline could have been an extra five yards for the Cougars from the 22 yard line oh has the momentum swung and Lee is throwing like the man people say he resembles Drew Bledsoe of the Patriots. Ryan Reed was off balance. He was out of sync for three quarters. He looked below average. But he has a zest for the game of football. And right now he is on. He is throwing the ball accurately. He's making good decisions with the football. I'm really proud of him the way he's come back in this game. And he has Washington on their heels. Look at this fourth quarter for Washington State. About two yards to go. Suki Wiggs was a man to put the stop to Ryan Lee. That was a big play and a big miscue. Washington State has muffed three quarterback center exchanges so far tonight. They lost possession on one of them, gave it the ball and a turnover, and now Lee faces a big third down. They'll give it to Michael Black, and Black is through to the 10 yard line. And he's got the first down. You know, they're running when you expect them to pass. They're passing when sometimes you think they're going to run. And they've got a great flow going now here in the fourth quarter. Now give some credit to Mike Price and John McDonnell. That's a great play call on third down and two to go to Michael Black. A lot of confidence in your offensive line and your running back, and Black gets the job done. First and goal from the 10-yard line. Black again to the five. He will score, but there is a flag down. I think that's going to be a personal foul call against Jason Chorak of the Huskies. This touchdown will stand, and pending a PAT, this game is tied up. They will tack that penalty on on the kickoff, though. Can you believe this? The Cougars were dead. They were in the South Palouse Fork down the street. And they have come back from 24 to nothing, down 24 to 3 in the fourth quarter. And they are now within one point of tying this game. And Leaf took a major shot from Jason Chorak. That was a cheap shot by Chorak. That was uncalled for. It was clearly a handoff. And more importantly, will Leaf be ready to go if this game heads into overtime? He's also their holder. The touchdown is good. Personal foul on the defense. That's a 15-yard penalty, and it'll be assessed on the kickoff. Mike Price, I mean, his heart must have sank when he saw that flag in the backfield on the touchdown. Personal foul call, though. Now a big point after. Tony Trunt. This year. He's tied the 
game of 24. 118 left. Gutsy call in third and short to go to Michael Black, and then first and goal from the 10. Another great play call. And how about Michael Black? The cutback ability on a slick surface makes the difference. Leaf just a straight hand off the Black, off tackle play, but Black feels the seam to the right side. And he cuts back, and he finds daylight. And he ties the game up. Here's the penalty, Jason Chorak, after handing, I mean, Leaf had given up the football a good two seconds prior. I think Chorak, if Chorak knows that he doesn't have the football, Chorak should probably get thrown out of the game on that. I'm not quite sure whether Chorak knew he still had the ball or not because Ryan Leaf was carrying out the fake. This is a bigger comeback than UCLA today against USC. They went to overtime where the Bruins beat the Trojans. What a remarkable comeback in the cold at Pullman. Well, Leaf told everybody, I'm a cold weather guy. I'm from Great Falls, Montana, and maybe he just needed to chill up a little bit. Most guys need to heat up. Maybe he needed to chill down. Well, some of our viewers may be wondering why Washington State goes with the point after. There's a new rule in town in the NCAA this year, and that is overtime. And if this game ends up tied at 24, each team will get a possession from the 25-yard line. And the first team to outscore the other after each team has had a possession in overtime wins the football game. If it's tied after the first overtime period, you head on to the next. If you're Mike Price, do you just blast it through the end zone or do you hang it up? Well, ordinarily, this is a good spot for an onside kick, but I don't think you can do it. You can't give the Huskies a short field to play for the field goal. I think you kick this out of the back of the end zone. Look at this guy off to the right. It's 25 degrees out. His mom's watching the game tonight, and she's she's got the vitamin C in the mail. They're insane, but they've got reason to be insane the way the Cougars have come back with 21 points in the fourth quarter to tie this game at 24. And what do you do if you're Scott Linehan calling the plays for the University of Washington a minute 18 to go? If you put the ball in the air, incomplete passes stop the clock. You may give Washington State a chance to win this game in regulation if you put the ball in the air. So... I wouldn't be surprised to see Washington keep the ball on the ground, at least for the first play or two, see if maybe Dylan can break a run. No, remember, and Dylan Dylan's on the uh, uh, talk too soon. Dylan's not coming out. Reed's in the game at tailback. These are blocking back. Looks like they are going to put the ball in. Brock Hewitt scrambling to the 30. He has the first down. Derek Henderson stops him, and the clock stops at 111. That was Scott Linehan, the offensive coordinator for Washington, showing me a little bravado here. It's pretty clear the Huskies are going to play for the win in regulation. You remember what happened last year? A tie game at 30. Washington marched down the field where John Wales hit the field goal with a minute left in the game to win it 33-30 in Seattle. Washington has... Yard field goal. I'm sorry, David, go ahead. Washington has two timeouts left. Brock Heward's going to try to work the sidelines. If he hits receivers towards the middle of the field, he wants to do it beyond the first down markers. Remember, the clock stops in college football on a first down. He wants to be secure with the football. The Huskies cannot give up a turnover on their end, or this game could be over quickly. Second and four. 58 seconds left. Reed on the delay. They'll chase him down. And he will not get the first down. He needed to get to the 40. And they push him out of bounds near the 39. There is John Wales. Remember, he is not a field goal artist like the great Cougar 
Jason Hansen, who hit one from 62 Wales, has not gone past 43 this year. Or like some of the great kickers in the history of Husky football, Chuck Nelson, Jeff Jager. He won the game in the Apple Cup last year in Seattle. A minute two to go. Hit a 23-yarder for a 33-30 win. Third and one. He's got the first down. James Darling stuffed him back. The clock will show 44 when Washington makes their next snap. Washington asking for a timeout. I don't like that. The Huskies have just picked up a first down. The clock stops on a first down. Why use a timeout in that situation with 44 seconds to go? Yeah, you could get that little pass over the middle. I, I like saving both timeouts because the clock stops. As a quarterback in college football on a clock drive, if you get a first down, you have time to get your team up to the line of scrimmage, get everybody set, and then the referee places the ball down. He has to have time to step back and get in the backfield and get in position himself. That gives you plenty of time to get the playoff, and you only waste a second or two. And, Steve, it's only a matter of time before Brock Hewitt takes a crack down the field on that fade route. He throws it so well, he's going to hit, try to hit a fade pass down the field or maybe a post route because it's safe. I don't, I don't think you'll see Brock Hewitt trying to throw the ball underneath or into traffic over the middle. He wants to make sure that he can see the danger, he can see the relationships between his receivers and the defensive backs, and usually that takes place when you're throwing the deep balls or the balls down the field to the outside. Well, he has the speed guys in the field at Jerome Payton and Fred Coleman, but Dave Janoski has not played in the second half. They've gone with Joe Jarzinka. Payton in single coverage, Chad Hinchin is on him. flag goes down. Early movement on the left side against the Huskies. This will be a procedure call against Washington. Here to be the tight end Jeremy Brigham. Before the snap, full start. Offense. Five yards from the previous spot. Still first down. Early movement on the left side. That was the tight end Brigham, the backup tight end Brigham for Washington. Not that big a penalty. It moves them back five yards, but the clock stops. Heward, regardless, has to hit a couple plays down the field in the passing game. They've got a big play guy in the game in Gerald Harris. He had a 67-yard touchdown against Arizona State in a big comeback. We'll go with the fade, and it is to Payton. They've got a first down inside the 30. <laughs> Thirty-seven yards in the first down, and Washington. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. Heward's going to be throwing the fade routes. They're safe routes. He can see his receiver. He can see the danger with the defensive back, and he throws the fade route as well as most quarterbacks in college football. Perfect ball. Great job by Payton to make sure he comes down with the catch. And they are in John Wales' range. the 25 to the 24 yard line. Wales, remember, was the guy who beat them last year with the game tied at 30. With one minute left in the game, he hit a 21 yard field goal. Now, right now it would be about a 41 yarder. Remember, Wales is only one for four over the course of the 96 season from 40 yards and beyond. Well, they call the timeout with eight seconds remaining. And they will bring on John Wales to go for the field goal, I would imagine, rather than take another chance going for the end zone and then perhaps suffering a sack or an interception. Maybe they will go take one last shot at the end zone. It would be about a 40, maybe even 41 yard field goal for John Wales. And here he comes.
The wind is in his face, but only at five miles an hour. And certainly it's within Wales range. The question is whether he has the accuracy. As I just mentioned, only hitting 25% of his attempts He's over the course of the season. By himself. That's what kickers do. They like to be left alone in these situations. I mean, there's not much that the uh, coach can tell him now. This might be a cotton bowl berth riding on the foot of John Wales. And remember, if Wales misses this, we're headed to overtime. And Jerry Jensen is in the game. Remember, he sprained his ankle. He is their snapper. Shane Fortney will hold. The Wales won the Apple Cup last year. That was from 20 yards closer. Washington State is going to freeze him with a timeout. And they call that putting the kicker on ice. You know, J Don James told us about one of his great memories of this matchup. 1975, it was Don James' first year, and Jim Sweeney was the coach for Washington State. And he said, we were absolutely getting killed. And on fourth down, they went for it. It was intercepted and returned for a touchdown. And later, Warren Moon hit Spider Gaines for a big score, and we we unbelievably won that game. And tonight, he's almost seen a payback, revenge, as Mike Price's team has fought back from 21 down in the fourth quarter when they appeared dead. Washington led in this game 24-nothing at one time. Now that's always the story behind great rivalries. Super wins, bitter defeats. How about the 1982 game? Washington just needed a win in the Apple Cup game in 82 to go to the Rose Bowl, and they matched up against a 2-7-1 Cougar team. The Huskies were knocked off in that one, and they were denied a trip to Pasadena. 41-yard field goal attempt. it looked like he had the game winner look at Wales feels like he's gonna get credit for the field goal there but the ball took a nasty hook on him Lambright saying geez you gotta be kidding me we were leading this game by 24 points and we are going to overtime unbelievable well, they're gonna remember this Apple Cup for a long time question well the home team had not lost the last five years and it looked like that streak would be snapped but it was Washington 24 Washington State nothing and a sensational fourth quarter led by sophomore quarterback Ryan Leaf and Mike Price's gutsy game calling and it has tied this game up at 24 now you have to give big credit to Mike Price. How about Ryan Leaf? What a heroic performance in the fourth quarter. He got some help from his receivers, some big plays from Timms and Carpenter, and the defense of the Cougars. Just shutting down the Huskies and enabling them, the Cougars, to come back here in the fourth quarter. Now, the way this overtime sets up, there's going to be a coin toss at midfield, and and the winner of the coin toss will elect to take the ball second. 99% of the time, if you win the coin toss, you want to take the ball second. That way, you know how many points you need to score. Both teams get the ball to 25-yard line. And the winner of the game is decided after both teams have had a possession and either team is leading the game. And, of course, on a defensive touchdown, a return of a fumble or an interception, the game is over at that point. 
for Mike Price talking with his captains will make that decision. James Darling and Scott Sanderson making sure they make the correct call if the coin cost. A toss of the coin goes their way. And the clock is not involved. No clock in overtime. And this is not sudden death. Both teams get a possession of the football. You're free to kick a field goal. There's first downs. And usually the team that wins this coin toss elects to take the ball second. And that way you know what type of work you have ahead of you. If the game is still tied after the first overtime period, after both teams have a possession, then you go to the second period, and then you reverse the teams. The other team gets the ball first. Well, we have already seen some marvelous games go to overtime this year in the Pac-10 Conference. Today, UCLA and their grudge match with USC went to two overtimes before beating the Trojans. And earlier this year, California went to four overtimes with Arizona before winning, what was it, 55-54, 56-55? 56-55, and remember Cal earlier in the season three. went to three overtimes against Oregon State. In that USC-UCLA game earlier today, both the Trojans and the Bruins were tied after they each had a possession in overtime, so it went to a second period. UCLA scored a touchdown. USC did not, and the game was over. The captains for Washington, they Bennett threw a lot. Probation back in 1993, super years in 95, and this year, Cam Kissel, Saf, John Fiala, Ink Aliaga, and of course the two almost locked first team all Pac-10 performers for the Cougars coming out. Scott Sanderson, the left tackle, and James Won the Dark. toss and elected to play defense. Washington chooses to defend that goal. Smart call by Washington. They wanted to defend the goal where their fans are who travel over from Seattle. But we're going to overtime because John Wales, who won the game last year, fails from 41. I've been around this land of ours from sea to shining sea. And if it stands for anything, it's that every man is free. Free to roam from city to city to ride the open range. Free to come and go at will to grab hold of the reins. But if you want to see the country in its glory and its pride, you've got to have a trusty mount that's always ready to ride. Mackenzie comes left. Three wide left, two wide right. Somebody's not covered in that right side. Let's see if Lee finds him. He steps up. He's in trouble. He's sacked for the 23-yard line. Chris Campbell with his second tackle behind the line of scrimmage. That will make it third down and goal now from the 23-yard line. Big play from the man from Linwood High School in Linwood, Washington. Backside pressure. He puts Ryan Leaf in a third and long situation. Third goal from the 24-yard line. Leaf has to make sure he doesn't try to bite off too much here. He wants to get the Cougars in position to score on fourth down. Chorax coming hard left side. Leaf is protected. He throws. Washington. So one last attempt for the Cougars. Down seven in overtime with a fourth and goal from the 23. Well, Ryan Leaf took a shot down the field on a low percentage throw there. He had a lot of room to run the football. And it's tough. It's tough to have the discipline to say, hey, I'm going to pick up some yardage on third down and then let the game rest on fourth down. The tendency, especially for a young quarterback, is to try to get that touchdown now on third down. And as a result, Washington State, they're going to need a real 
big play here on fourth down. Carpenter and McKenzie come left. Michael Black stays in. Leaves with a deep drop. Looping end zone. Carpenter, he's out of bounds. Washington wins. decided by inches. Carpenter was so close to getting a foot down in bounds. Great throw by Ryan Lee. Heroic comeback by the Cougars. One of the greatest comebacks I have ever seen down 21 points against the number 12 team in the nation. And Mike Price's team fights back to tie it at 24 only to go to overtime and lose it 31-24. Remember, Steve, at one time this game was 24 to nothing. There's Brock Hewitt. He threw the winning touchdown pass. And here is the one they tried to tie it. This Husky defense has been so impressive over the course of the 96 season. Ryan Leaf back. Trying to give Carpenter some time to come open on the post corner route. The ball is thrown perfectly. Carpenter in great position. Trying to get a foot down. Wow. Jim Lambright saying no, he's out of bounds. Let's go home a winner. Let's go back to Seattle with a record this year of nine and two and a chance for the Washington Huskies to go to the Cotton or the Holiday Bowl in postseason. We'll come back and wrap it up. But Washington in a thriller wins in overtime over their rivals, Washington State. 